Welcome to Travel in Style, the series that brings you the very best of the best. This program is no exception as we visit one of the most exciting cities in the world, Rio in Brazil. Join us as we take a cable car up the famous Sugarloaf Mountain, visit the fun-filled beaches of Ipanema and Copacabana, and stay in luxury in a purpose-built palace of the same name. Those of you who like a thrill with your sightseeing are in for a real treat as we fly over a thousand kilometers south to take a powerboat trip upriver and head straight for the powerful Iguazu Falls on the border of Argentina. We start this luxury extravaganza in Rio, home of the carnival, bossa nova, and samba. It's a wonderful city to behold, especially when viewed from the many vantage points that include the mountain Corcovado and here at the Sugarloaf, made famous by James Bond in the late 70s when he fought Jaws atop a cable car. The view is amazing, even on cloudy days, as distant landscapes appear and disappear through the eerie mist. This is a tropical climate with ever-changing weather, so quite often a little patience pays off when waiting for that perfect picture. Back at sea level and the historic Old Town in downtown is a delight to explore. Here you can feel the city's roots in its architecture. It was the Portuguese who named the city Rio de Janeiro, following an expedition in January 1502 when they mistakenly believed they had moored in a river mouth. Hence, the city's name is a direct translation of January River. Downtown, known locally as Centro, is the former residence of the Portuguese governors of Brazil. Today, it's the financial hub of the city, so it's busy and bustling yet retains an old world charm. One little gem to visit is the Confitaria Colombo, a pastry emporium established in 1894. Its palatial decor makes it the perfect place for lunch and high tea. The word beach is synonymous with Rio. On weekends, the locals, or cariocas, flock to the beach in thousands. This is Ipanema, a magnet for young and old, wealthy and poor. Here, the cariocas, when wearing beachwear, seem to forget all classes, politics and religions. It's a brilliant culture of fun and sun that's a joy to observe. A block from the beach is another cafe well worth a visit. Agorata de Ipanema, or the girl from Ipanema, is where Vinicius de Mores and Tom Hobin wrote that classic song after watching a pretty girl pass by daily on her way to the beach. If you haven't heard of Ipanema, you will certainly have heard of the Copa or Copacabana, the most famous district of Rio. And in true world-class style, we have checked in to a palace of the same name. Designed by the French architect Joseph Gir, who was inspired by two hotels in southern France, the Negresco in Nice and this iconic hotel, the Carlton in Cannes. Gir was a great fan of Charles Dalma, who built the Carlton in true palatial style in 1912. So when the Copacabana Palace opened its doors just 10 years later in 1923, he had created a stucco-fashioned edifice that the people of Rio were proud of. The hotel has always had a very, very strong uh, identity with uh, Copacabana as a whole uh, and also a very, very strong identity with Brazilian society because it was the venue for so many important events, social events, wedding receptions and so on and so forth. Uh, it, it figures you know, very much in the minds of Brazilians as being a very, very Brazilian hotel. This elegant property represents a classic marriage of Latin and European styles, but it's the friendliness, sophistication, and service of its staff that ensures its status as one of the greatest hotels in the world. 
Of course, you know, the service and of course the celebrities, of course, are the part of the hotel's history. It's a hotel that was built to be a palace. It was built to be a remarkable hotel. It was from its early days, that was the whole intention. And uh, so the building itself, and of course its distinctiveness uh, in terms of its architecture, uh, it's a very, very strong physical presence. The building is uh, immediately recognized by, by Cariocas as being one of the few buildings which are really remarkable and a very, very strong physical presence. This landmark hotel draws in the rich and famous, like Ipanema draws Cariocas to the beach. A cluster of fans like these, awaiting a glimpse of R&B singer Mariah Carey, is a regular occasion to behold. The kitchen plays a role in the success of every hotel. The Cipriani restaurant is no exception. The success of the restaurant has come to make simple plates, supporting the product, making exalting the product in the plates non coprendoli con, con molte salse che è tipico della cucina veneziana e della cucina mediterranea quindi usando erbe, usando... e, e il primo attore nel piatto era proprio l'ingrediente principale. Rio has seen troubled times in the past but the hotel's guests just keep coming back sending a clear endorsement to the management and its staff. My proudest moment is probably having guests tell us, as they do time and time again, that they are, yes, very impressed by the installations, very impressed by the comfort of the hotel, but what really most impresses them is, is the service and the people who deliver that service. Uh, and that is when I really feel that I've done a reasonable job, because it's the staff, it's, the, it's our team that really provides the, the icing on the cake to the Copacabana experience. It's not just fine dining with hushed conversations and a distant piano. This is the new Bar de Copa, the number one spot in town. And now, for a different type of wildlife. A 90-minute flight north of Stockholm brings us to Karuna, a remote town 200 kilometers into the Arctic Circle. Here, the winters are long and cold, with the sun barely crossing the horizon during December. For many years, the nearby village of Yukus Jarvi and the wilderness that surrounds it were purely a summer retreat, offering outdoor experiences such as walking and kayaking in the land of the midnight sun. By the end of the 1980s, travelers began to seek new and more challenging experiences and the pure and raw beauty of the Arctic elements were recognized as an asset. Now, for four months every year, a beautiful and surprising structure rises from the silent and frozen banks of the Tornay River, the Ice Hotel. The path of the Tornay River was formed over 10,000 years ago when the glaciers of the Ice Age carved their way through the landscape. The Tournay forms the very foundations of the hotel, which is built every December from ice blocks harvested from the river and to which it returns in the spring as the temperatures rise and the snow and ice begin to melt. It's the only hotel in the world that, that goes away and we have to do it again. Arn Berg is the hotel's creative director responsible for its evolution in this harsh environment. Of course, it is a challenge because we are living 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle it's, um, it's what seems like a hostile environment, but at the same time, I think the nature and, and uh, the weather conditions and the light conditions and the aurora borealis and all that brings on to the atmosphere. I, I mean, even, even if you come here, like now today, it's minus 30 degrees, and it's like we want it to turn into an adventure and an experience that shouldn't be hostile. It should be a challenge, maybe a little bit of a challenge because we wouldn't like to make it too comfortable. Then it's not an ice hotel. Now in its 19th year, the Swedish Ice Hotel was the very first of its kind in the world and has welcomed over 26,000 guests. Designing and building a new hotel from scratch every year is challenging enough, but in temperatures of minus 30 degrees Celsius, the challenge for the construction team is even greater. 
Now we have the sun, the sun is back since two weeks. Before that, we didn't have any sun. So when we are building in November this old and to create all the art, we're also in a hurry to electrify. It's 6,000 square meters, almost 80 rooms that have to be electrified and lit. And, and all the suites have to have individual uh, uh, light design. So that's a real task for those people who are working with the, with the, with the electricity and, and with the lighting. At the heart of the ICE Hotel is art. Every suite and indeed every incarnation of the ICE Hotel is unique. Art Suite 305 is called ICE Plosion and was created by a team from Russia and Austria. The emanating radiant glow is intended to rejuvenate the sleeper by bathing them in a shower of warmth and light. While on the other side of the hallway, a Japanese artist has cleverly used light and ice to recreate the splendor of the stars and the majesty of the moon. To sleep in a room made of ice and snow is a surreal and captivating experience. They stay one night in the, in the ice hotel in the cold accommodation and uh, a couple of nights in warm. And before their night in ice hotel they might be a little bit nervous but still very excited. And most people are kind of surprised in the morning when they wake up because they've slept really well. And most of them are somewhat breathtaking because it's difficult to imagine what it's like to be here, even if you've seen lots of pictures in beforehand. And they love the excursions outside, especially now in uh, February and uh, March. It's lovely to be outside. The frozen river and the wilderness that surrounds it offer visitors a huge playground to explore. Here you can follow the reindeer migration venture into the breeding ground of the moose, or take to the ice on skates. Another popular activity is dog sledding. These Alaskan Huskies outnumber the humans in this part of the world and seem to be most at home when pulling a sledge through the deep powdered snow. At the head of the pack is a team leader who takes instructions from the driver at the back of the sled. Being pulled silently through the snowy landscape by these powerful dogs is a mesmerizing experience. While these incredible athletes take a break, relax by the fire with a warming drink and swap canine stories with your companions. Most visitors to the ICE Hotel come for two or three nights, spending one night in the ICE Hotel and the rest of their stay in the nearby warm accommodation. The hotel has its very own church, which is popular for marriage ceremonies and baptisms. As temperatures outside plummet, the thick walls of the hotel act as insulation, keeping the temperatures inside at a constant minus five degrees. Guests sleep in a thermal sleeping bag on a bed made of snow and ice, covered with reindeer hides and a thick mattress. I think it's a very romantic experience to stay here. Um, you come here with your partner and uh, to get away for a weekend or so and uh, try something completely different, uh, different environment and uh, it's a bit of a challenge maybe for you as well. If you come here in December you get to experience what a polar night is and that's when the sun never rises above the horizon. So we don't have any daylight in, in late December. If you come in February and March, you will see that we have plenty of daylight and lots of sun. The snow-covered forest, solid rivers and lakes around Yukus Jarvi can also be explored by taking an exhilarating outing by snowmobile.
You don't need any prior experience to take the hour-long excursion across the layers of powdered snow covering the ground. Just a sense of adventure. A hot spot in the evening is the ice bar. Here, syrups of local fruits and berries, such as ligonberry and snowberry, are mixed with pure Swedish vodka. It is a testament to the purity of the waters of the Tornay River that even the glasses in the ice bar are made from it. It's this clarity and crystal clear finish that gives the ice hotel its dreamlike sparkle. Of course, this water is from, it's coming from the mountains between Norway and Sweden, and it's passing by Jokasjärvi here, and it's going to the sea. And just here, uh, it's perfect conditions, because the river is quite slow here, which means that it can turn into thick ice, and a river is still, it's still a movement, which means that we won't get so much air bubbles attached into, into the ice, so we get the clarity. And then we also, we call, it, we call it that we have our plant, that we are ice farmers, because we have the plant outside here, and we, we try to maintain and, and, and uh, take, take care of the ice in a way <laughs> during, during the winter until we harvest in March and April. And then we harvest about 5,000 tons of crystal clear ice. We really put a lot of effort that we want to have uh, uh, new creation. We want to ten, ten, uh, see the boundaries of what is possible in art and design, do in snow and ice. That's why we invite so many artists, and that we, we make a blend, a mixture of uh, experienced artists, those who've been here before, and those who are rookies. They've never been here. Maybe they haven't seen snow. Each year, hundreds of artists from around the world, some of which have no experience with such building materials, submit their ideas for the ice hotel suites to a panel of judges who choose approximately 25 to come to Sweden to recreate their designs. I find every year amazing the what well, we have seen on sketches, when we, when we look at the, the sketches that the artists send to us, and then we see they come into reality. And some might not turn out to what you saw on the paper, but some turn out to something better and so on. And we always want to do new stuff, but, <laughs> you know, some, some things have to come back. We used to have a chandelier every year, one chandelier, and then last year we didn't have any chandelier because we said, hey, let's change, let's not give everyone what is expected. But there was such a... Um, people were very disappointed <laughs> because they've seen it. They've seen it on pictures or maybe television or something. So, so my reaction to that was that let's do the revenge of the chandelier. Let's let it come back. So we made four chandeliers in the crystal hall. And then the other thing is that we always have column. That's both decorative and it's a supporting thing because we need it for the big hall there. So, but I wanted to like to, we wanted to twist it to make it like, so it should be a moving dancing uh, columns in a way. Uh, so um, um, we made models and sketches and then we came up to this solution. The ice hotel melts and begins its return to the river from which it came in April each year completing its cycle of life and leaving behind only memories for its guests and inspiration for the design team. We bring so much effort in creating this, and, and we know that it just lasts for four and five months, everything. And then it's like, then it's back to the river, and uh, no more. So as this hotel slowly disappears, time for a change of scene and some more self-indulgence.
Zermatt has many world-class experiences to offer, and this one definitely fits straight into that category, as it's not every day you ski past a selection of igloos located directly on the ski trails. So pull up, get your skis off, and pop in for a quick glue vine to warm yourself, or maybe stay the night. Incredibly, some of the rooms even offer in-suite facilities. We have a hotel with uh, space for 34 people to sleep in here. We can eat in here. We, ha we make a Swiss cheese fondue for the night. And we also have Igloo Suite with the private jacuzzi. And they can have a, a very nice night, a warm night in a sleeping bag together, close together. So far we had uh, 17 proposal in, uh, in the Igloo Dorf and two marriage. On the daytime we have an uh, outside bar so skier can come to our bar and have a glue wine, a homemade glue wine on our, on our bar. So this really is the perfect mountain chill out area where you can enjoy the intricate ice carvings created by the Igloo Dorf team. This year, the team uses a medieval theme based on the French walled city, Carcassonne. Well, sadly, it's time for us to head back down to the village and say farewell to Zermatt and its friendly people. Be sure to join us next time and travel in style. So till the next time, goodbye.